State Treasurer John Chung, thanks for coming in. Great to be here. We're going to have a new governor in 2019. The election is next year. Uh, why are you the person to take Jerry Brown's place? Uh, I think I have that deep passion about what's uh, extraordinary about California, principally its people, and I want to make sure that California uh, continues to be and even reaches greater heights and be in that place where uh, people come for greater social and economic mobility. Now, how do you ensure that? Like, uh, what does that mean? Yeah, the, I think I've done that. Uh, first of all, you have to make sure that you have a strong financial and economic foundation for the state. In California's history, I'm the only person who have served in all three public funding and finance offices. So when we had that financial crisis, in part it was my leadership that helped California move out of that very difficult time in 2008, 2009. You know, in the recent poll, 75% of people, voters, said they don't know enough about you to have an opinion of you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you, uh, your parents were Taiwanese immigrants. You grew up in Chicago area, Illinois. What was it like as, for you as a kid? Uh, growing up in, in, the, in the suburbs of Chicago. Yeah, so it was a very different time. We know that there were, it was very racially charged back then. So I was born in the early 1960s in America. We were the first Asian Pacific American family in our community in suburban Chicago. And so we faced that discrimination. We, we would have ugly racial epithets spray painted on our garage. We had rocks throw through our window. Uh, we would face many taunts as I would go to school. But uh, others overcame, my family overcame, and uh, in part, that's why I went into public service. I cared about social and economic change. One of the issues that's bubbling up again is affirmative action. And uh, African Americans and Latinos seem to see it in one way often different from Asian Americans. What, what are your thoughts about affirmative action? I believe in affirmative action. We have a long ways to reach our greatest ideals that everybody gets to participate, uh, everybody gets to embrace in our public society. Uh, some of the Asian Americans are afraid because they face that discrimination. Here in San Francisco, we know that this city was formed in part because people were discriminated uh, from the mining industry, from going for gold, and came here and became owned restaurants, worked in the restaurants, worked uh, as dry cleaners. And so they're afraid of the discrimination they faced in the past. We have to make sure that we expand the opportunities. Uh, we make sure that everybody understands that this is an inclusive society so that they don't operate from a perspective of fear, but one of one that where they understand that they're valued. You uh, have joked about being not the most charismatic person in the field. Some would say Gavin Newsom, Lieutenant Governor, or former LA Mayor Antonia Villaraigosa more so. How, how do you make up for that? Or do you yeah. feel like you have to? Well, yeah, some are more flashy, right? But I believe in action and substance. So when you think about today here in San Francisco, in Northern California, in Southern California, throughout the state, we have major homelessness issues. We have ma major housing issues, right? So who's actually taking the bold action? Let the action speak, right, instead of just the words. Uh, so, you know, I've worked to increase uh, financing and building affordable housing by 80% in my two and a half years, right? You can talk about doing something in the future, or you actually can show precedent take action and demonstrate to people, we're actually putting a roof over your head. I actually hear you, not only through my ears, but through my heart. I want to make sure that you have a better life. Another big issue was transportation. Uh, the legislature just passed a tax on gasoline, 12 cents a gallon. One Democratic state senator is facing a recall because he voted for it. Would you have voted for that if you were in the legislature? I absolutely would have. The, uh, we have to make sure that we have a world-class infrastructure, right? People comment all the time whether you live outside of California, within California. You know, our roads have been underinvested in, right? We're losing massive quality of life uh, and productivity because people are stuck in the highways. The great minds that live up here in the Bay Area shouldn't be sitting on the roads for an hour, hour and a half, right? They ought to be at home taking care of their kids, taking their kids to go play for those soccer games, doing other things that are meaningful and important to them. Some of those great minds here in the Bay Area are thinking about things like robotics and uh, artificial intelligence and driverless vehicles, and that makes a lot of people nervous. What are your thoughts, and how, and how would you approach that issue of you know the middle class worrying about being sort of invented out of a job? We're gonna have to make sure that lifelong education is available, whether it's immediate access to community college for immediate training programs uh, or other types of efforts. Our workforce investments are there so that people can remain employed. I want to ask you a few questions about some sort of hot button issues. Sure. If, if you can keep it to yes and no, that would okay. be great. But uh, if you need to go a little longer, that's fine too. Did you support Prop 64 to legalize marijuana? I did. Yeah, and I why? voted for it. You voted for it. The, there were obviously some major shortcomings that I'm working on today in regards to the cannabis banking. The, but I, I thought it's important that we take move forward and try to address some of the criminal justice, social justice issues. Have you ever tried it? Uh, the, uh, I tried it once in high school. Uh, I know that you're, on a serious note, your own family has been victim of serious crime, and I'm wondering if you think the death penalty is ever called for? 
uh, so my sister uh, was was murdered. Uh, so the uh, the uh, I had pers I have personal reservations, right? But the voters chose to pass uh, the death penalty and reinforce the death penalty. So. Uh, I think we should follow the law. Okay, and then also high-speed rail. The voters also approved high-speed rail years ago, but it's become controversial. It's become expensive. It's been a priority for Governor Brown to use some funds from the cap and trade money to fund high-speed rail. Would you continue doing that as governor? I want to make sure that we continue to go forward and make sure that we put high-speed rail on a sustainable financial path. Uh, so. Uh, in the near future, we're going to have to find some private uh, sector financing. Uh, there's simply, at this point, not enough money in the general fund to pay for all of it. Would you continue using the cap and trade money? Uh, we'll continue to have that conversation. What's your that, inclination? Like that, what's, what that, are the pros that, and cons? That would, that would be part of the mix, but right, obviously, we need more money. All right. State Treasurer John Chung, I'm sure we'll see you again as the campaign unfolds, but thanks for coming in. Thank you kindly.